Well, why don't we do this? Let's open with a word of prayer really quick, and then we'll introduce ourselves and go from there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the fun that we had this morning. Thank you for, that we can come together and enjoy ourselves in your house. And Lord, we just pray that you'd help us to continue in that light this morning, to enjoy ourselves as we learn together. Bless this time. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm Jolene Dustin, and if I haven't met you, I'm the children's pastor at the church at Maltby Monroe. Um, I've been there for about 11 years now. I'm married and have two boys. I don't know. Do I'm supposed to say all of this? I'm married and have two boys, seven and five. Um, and I'm also the Kids Missionary Challenge Coordinator for the network. So I help put the prayer guides together, um, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Too. Mm -hmm. And I am Phil Malcolm. I am a children's missionary to Africa. Uh, we currently live in Togo in West Africa, but we work throughout that region. And then across the continent as part of our leadership team for Africa's children. And before I was a children's missionary, I was a children's pastor here in the States, both in the Northwest and in Oregon districts. So I love hanging out with you. You are my people. Mm -hmm. It's cool to be, hang out with people that get what we do. And uh, we are excited about sharing with you this morning some ideas that will help you connect kids to missionaries. And that's what this is all about. How do you connect your kids and get them excited about missions and in particular about missionaries? Mm -hmm. So Jolene, take it away. What's our first idea yes. here? So my first, we have 10 for you, the top 10 ways. The first one is these prayer guides that we put together for you to use in your children's I ministry. only wish you'd mention those sometime during the week. I know. So if I have not got a chance to describe these prayer guides, they are available to you at our Kids Missionary Challenge table. They are also online. And this is a great way for you to take this back to your children's ministry and teach these kids about our Northwest missionaries. Right now we have eight. We try to do one a quarter. And basically it's split up, split up into six topics um, that you can use however you want. Some churches have done it on a weekly thing. Some do it every quarter they go through one. There's also a giving project attached to each prayer guide because sometimes we don't always know you know what to give to so not only can you talk to them about where they live what the climate's like what the kids like what their their ministry is there but there's also a giving project so if you plan ahead and you say you do one a quarter then your kids can be giving to something every quarter through these prayer guides people have used them for their summer outreaches for VBA so they use this for that so these are available to you we do all the grunt work we even tell you what to say if you're not good at thinking on your feet like me as I'm being videotaped. So you're um, saying they can just be puppets and just right. mouth the words. Now, obviously, you know, when we're teaching kids, we don't want to, you know, um, but you can use what we say word for word, or you can use your own. But these are available to you for free. All the media, there's clips that you can use that are all online, but it's a great way for you to be able to use this in your children's ministry. And if you have missionaries that come to your church, chances are that some of the missionaries that are in the prayer guides will be coming to your church. So it's a great way for kids to connect missionaries to the prayer guides. And I think this is a great idea. This is an idea that I'm stealing because mm -hmm. our Oregon district doesn't have those. So we're gonna yeah. be taking those and you guys got to pick those up. Stop well, by the, the table and pick those up. the Northwest District is the cutting edge. All right, so that's idea number one. Idea number two. Are you ready for this? Drum roll, please. Oh, wow, you guys are good. Ta-da! Have you ever seen one of these before? It's called a cellular telephone. <laughs> the idea here is missions minute videos. And the idea is to ask your missionaries to do 30 seconds a minute, just stand up wherever they're doing ministry and say, do kind of one of those little selfie videos and Tell our kids what you're doing. Now, I will say this, I'm a missionary, and I get requests for videos all the time. And if I did all the video requests I had, I would have no, no time to actually do ministry. So how can you make this, and I'm gonna give you some tips to help it, make it feasible for your missionaries. Number one, be specific about what you want them to do. Say, we just want 30 seconds to a minute, it doesn't have to be fancy. Tell them exactly what you're looking for. Number two, be generic. It seems kind of the opposite. What I mean by that is don't ask them to specifically greet your kids because if I can create one video and tell them this, say, hey, create a video that you can use for all your churches, but send us a copy. That way, all of a sudden, you've helped me to multiply my outreach. So say, hey, do a video, uh, you're, you're working with kids, just do a video when you're standing up in front of kids the next time and say, this is what we do and this is how BGMC helps us. And now, you're actually helping the missionary. They're going to say, well, wait, that church just gave me an idea. I can post this online and all my churches can download it. Number three, um, when you're doing this, take the workload off the missionary. Say, you just film the video. Send us the raw footage. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us aren't very tech savvy. 
And I say that, uh, I enjoy that, but a lot of missionaries, they don't have the time, they don't know how to do that. So if they can just take the raw footage and upload it, and tell them how they can get it to you. And then you guys do, I mean, when I'm talking editing on a 30 second video, you're cutting off the, the opening where they're going, um, is the camera on? That sort of thing. And you're cutting off the ending and maybe putting on a BGMC logo or a KMC logo. So I'm not talking about anything fancy, but it's a quick, easy way that you can continue to connect your kids with missionaries even after they visit or before they come there. And now they're seeing a missionary talking to them from the other side of the world. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so that's idea number two. To piggyback off that, I did not talk to you about this, but we did that kind of for our vacation Bible adventure. We took a missionary family that were in the Philippines, and each day the kids actually recorded the daily Bible point for us in the Philippines, and they sent that to us, and then we were able to show that every day during our um, missions giving project. That's so, awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Okay, number three is missionary visits to kids' church. This is uh, one of my uh, special close friends, the Capone family. Um, and missionaries, usually when they come on a Sunday morning, they're only given a window in the adult service. And they love to come to kids' church. Well, most of them do. And so if you have that calendar from your lead pastor, if they give you that schedule or ask for it, then you can connect with them in advance and have them come down to kids' church, and they will do a portion of the service for you. I've had a couple missionaries that they have only been given a five to ten minute window, so when they're done, they'll come and take over kids' church for me, especially if they're gifted with kids. Um, not all are, are gifted with children, but they will come down and they'll talk to your kids, and that's a great way for them to connect a face to the actual missionary that they hear about. Um, and so this, I love doing this. I love having missionaries come to kids' church and talk to the kids. The kids love it because they get to ask questions and what do kids like to know? Well, what do your kids do there? What do they like to do there? And so it's just kind of a fun way. So piggyback off that when they come to your church to be in the adult gathering and have them come to kids' church so they can talk to your kids because that's just another way that um, you're getting missions in front of your kids. So that's number three, missionary visits to kids' church. Okay, and number four ties right in with that because again, let's make it easier easier for a missionary. So give them the microphone mm -hmm. and give them a list of questions. Number four is quick fire questions. Have 10 questions that you have already laid out for them, especially for those missionaries that aren't children's people, that aren't comfortable. You're going to make them as comfortable as possible. You're going to send them the questions ahead of time and say, here's what I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. Where's your country located? What do the kids like to do there? What do they like to eat? And come up with those questions leading up to some questions at the end what is the one thing that you want us to pray for for your ministry? How can we help you in your ministry? So start off with some fun things, informational things, talking about where they're ministering, what they're doing, and, but then leading into how can we connect with you? How can our kids pray for you? How can our kids give to you? All right? So those are quick fire questions. The other thing I like about this is that when you're doing these quick fire questions, now you were just talking about the missionaries that only have a window and can come down for the rest of the time. Let's turn it on its ear. What if they are in the adult service for the whole service, but during worship they can come down for 10 minutes and you have 10 minutes of quick fire questions. And that way you can get your missionaries to come even when they are with the adults. You say, hey, would you just come down during worship time and spend five, 10 minutes with us? It'll be really quick, but our kids will get to know you. I think that's an awesome thing. So number 10, or number four, yes. 10 quick questions, <laughs> quick fire questions. Okay, um, number five is midweek missions. Now, I don't know, some of you might not be doing rangers and girls' ministries, but you might have a midweek service. Um, missionaries, usually, typically, there's not a lot of Wednesday night services anymore. And so I've had a couple of my missionaries come on a Wednesday night, and so we dedicate the first hour where all the kids come together into our main auditorium, and we meet the missionary. Um, just last year, I had Amy DeWitt, she's a missionary to Russia, come, and she spent the whole hour with all of our kids talking about Russia, herself, she played some games with the kids, and the kids loved it. And we planned in advance, four to six weeks in advance, so that kids knew that she was coming, and so we were able to collect money every week to give to her when she came. So um, you can capitalize, capitalize, is that a good word? Capitalize on missionaries coming during the week when they're not doing services. And I've talked to so many that are willing to do that, you know, and they, and they love talking to kids. I just, if you don't know Jenny Razzie, she was just telling me yesterday, I would love to come. When are you going to have me come on a Wednesday night? So I'm going to call and schedule her because the kids love to hear about, especially they make the connection if they came to camp. Like last year, um, last summer, the Bayos were at camp and I was able to have them come to kids' church. And the kids were like, oh, I remember you from camp. And so anytime we can get them back into our churches, and so you, if you have a personal relationship with a missionary that's here on furlough and they have a Wednesday night available, have them come or any night of the week. Have them come and speak to your kids and plan in advance so that you can give them 
an offering when they come to. So midweek missions, capitalize on that midweek program. And I will say as a missionary, I think that's a great idea because we do have more of those midweek time slots open. We're not able to get in, you know, they're, they're doing home groups for the adults and we, we're, we're looking for things to do. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great way the missionaries are saying, hey, I've got another contact point with, with the church. And so that's a great way to, mm -hmm. to plug in your missionaries. Okay, our next idea is two, two, two things in one. It's like a magic trick. Did you see that? You're stunned and amazed. What is it? Okay. Our next thing is prayer cards. And here's our prayer cards. And I got two quick ideas that you can use prayer cards for. Number one, prayer card circles. Get your kids praying right there in church. Have them, uh, and you can either pass out the same prayer card or have different missionaries and have your kids praying for different missionaries. Have them make a little circle prayer time and every kid in that circle, so we are prayer partners, we're praying together for the same missionary. This is our missionary for the month. Mm -hmm. And every kid in that circle gets that prayer card, they get to take him home. Mm -hmm. And then next month, you can switch and you're still using the same four missionaries, but now this group over here is praying for one missionary and this praying for another one. And you can actually make these collector cards. A great thing I've seen is, is to uh, take these and with a hole punch, make a little hole in them and put them on a keychain. And the kids then can have all their missionaries that they can pray for and just kind of flip through them. They keep adding, adding missionaries to that. So prayer card circles with the prayer cards. The other thing I would say to help them keep praying during the week, not just in your service, but connect your missionaries with a daily activity. For example, we noticed that when we printed these new prayer cards, we, we thought we'd do something new and cool and, and make square prayer cards, and they turn out looking like coasters. So we went with it. We said, hey, this is your coaster. And in our part of the world, they grow a lot of coffee. A lot of coffee is grown in West Africa. A lot of cocoa is grown in West Africa. And so if you have a hot chocolate or coffee, put that on your table in the morning. If your mom, for kids, you can say, if your mom has a cup of coffee, Put that there next to the coffee cup and she can remind you to pray for your missionaries every morning when they make that cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Finding a daily activity, especially if it can tie somehow to that missionary, is a great way, a daily prayer reminder, you pray for your missionary every day during the week. And so they take that prayer card home and it's connected to something that they're gonna see every day, whether it's brushing their teeth, um, whether it's uh, getting milk out of the fridge, they can put it right there next to the, the milk in the fridge, something that they'll do and they'll see every single day. All right, so prayer cards, two different ways. Prayer card circles in service and prayer card activities when they take those home. We'll put those right there. And part of Kids Missionary Challenge um, is to teach our kids how to pray for our missionaries. And so this is a great way to encourage them to pray for your missionaries, you know, because that's really important for missionaries. They need our prayer, and so that's a great way. I and have prayer all makes a difference. Yes. Uh, you know, you, may, you might think everyone comes with their prayer cards and they say, yeah. we need you to pray for us, and it's, it's required, right? Mm -hmm. As a missionary, I'm, I'm required by law to have, ask, ask you to pray, so I, I look spiritual. But it's, it's more than that. We have seen God work miracles in times of distress, in times of need, and you, you send out uh, an email or a request for prayer, and we have watched miracles, things that shouldn't have happened, happen because the people of God pray. And I believe kids have an incredible faith, and I want them praying for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, number seven is a dedicated kids' church service. This is our logo um, for our kids' ministries. And you can always plan one or two times a year where your whole kids' church service is just dedicated to missions. Um, this is a good way if you want to do the prayer guide, you can easily do a prayer guide in one service. Or if you have other where you bring in a missionary, they do the service, maybe they make food from where they're at, and you just dedicate one whole service for a mission service, to teach them how to pray, to give, to go, what does that look like? Um, and kids love doing that. And again, if you plan in advance, you can always have some kind of giving opportunity for them to give to if you plan in advance. Um, and kids love to hear about other kids in different countries. Why is it important that we pray? Why is it important that we give? And am I being called to missions? Um, and so dedicate a, a kids church service once or twice a year so that they're learning about missions specifically. Um, and that's always been a good win for our kids in our church so awesome and by contrast we don't just want to teach them about missions twice a year so right. my next idea are you ready for it yes. well one person's ready for it the rest <laughs> you forget. okay I'm, I'm packing up I'm going home <laughs> okay our next idea is every single week right here uh -huh. take a look uh, take a look at my clock I want you to look very carefully here this is what I'm talking about watch this one two three you get that let me back it up again here, starting right at the top there. One, 
two, three. Three minutes. The clock here is to remind us that you can do a lot in three minutes. What about a three minute mission sermon with your kids? Taking your uh, prayer guides or taking the BGMC curriculum that comes from the national office, coming up, uh, do a Google search. How do I teach missions to kids? One of my pet peeves in ministry is when we take an offering and all it is is we play a silly song and pass a bucket around. That's not teaching kids giving. We need to train our kids to give and to give sacrificially. And so every time we take an offering, I want to see some sort of teaching going on, training the kids why we do this. It's not just a meaningless habit because those are the things that fall by the wayside. But when they learn this is what I do as a Christian, this is an act of service and an act of worship. So train them on that and train them how missions fits into that, that we give beyond ourselves. It's not just about giving to our church to support our things that we like to do, but it's giving to help people on the other side of the world. And so in three minutes, you can do that every single week during your offering time. Have a three minute training, a three minute teaching, and there's all kinds of materials out there. I'm gonna let you guys get creative and, and Google search, but I will say the BGMC curriculum is a great thing to just pull apart and take a little piece here, a little piece there, and do your three minute training throughout the, the whole month. All right, three minutes. Uh, number nine is giving contests. Now, I don't ha I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of buddy barrels in my church anymore. But kids love giving contests. And I'm not saying do it all the time because obviously we want our kids to learn to give you know, from their hearts. But giving contests really do encourage kids to give. And you can do it different ways. Boys, girls, your small group against small group. Um, but make it fun. You know, obviously you're teaching them that we want them to maybe give up you know, something every week. You know, instead of getting a hot chocolate, maybe you take that money and you bring it to Michigan. Um, during our summer outreach, we always pick some missionary to give to. And yes, it's only one week, but we, the last few years, we've given over $4,500 in a week. And yes, it, there is a giving. It is, you know, we have pictures of the missionaries. We talk about what they're doing, but they're encouraged to give. And then we always have the winning team. They get to celebrate by one of their leaders get something done to them and they love it now do I say do giving contests all the time no because we want them to give out of their hearts but it's a fun way to get kids to give because if you know if kids aren't excited they're not going to bring in money and we know that kids aren't going to bring in a lot of money right so we have to get them excited somehow because their parents are going to have to get involved and so giving contests are a great way to raise money um, for missionaries and to get kids excited about giving so giving contests are number nine awesome <laughs> and our last one number ten finally at the end here you guys are so excited about it all right, here we go. Last one, pledge forms. Now these are our actual missionary pledge forms. It's what I had as an object to, to remind you. I'm not saying that you do one of these and, and ask your missionaries to give a pledge form to every kid. What I'm saying is you can create your own little pledge form, our faith promise form that the kids can fill out. And you know what, we ask our adults to do this. We say, hey, we're not asking you to give what's in your pocket. We're asking you to pray and ask God to speak to you about what he would have you to give and to believe. It's a promise you make with God. God, as you provide, I'll give. You know, what we teach our kids is what they'll do as adults. And so we want to get our kids involved in this idea of making a pledge to missions, making a promise to missions. And it's incredible. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, the only way in the kingdom of heaven is if you have that childlike faith. And when kids exercise their faith, incredible things happen. We have a young girl in Oregon that heard about the need for water in Africa. And she said, I'm going to raise water, uh, money for a, a well in Africa. She raised over $10,000 because she felt God speaking to her heart. And no one said, you can't do that. And they got behind this project. And all of a sudden, in our little country of Togo, they're saying, well, we have all this money coming from where I never even heard of this girl before. But she, she just had a passion and a vision for that. And her children's leader encouraged her to do that. And she raised money for a community in Togo, in our country, that needed, needed a well. That's the kind of thing we want to encourage in our kids. It's exciting when, when you challenge them to take a step of faith and to really pray about it. This is not just, hey, I'm going to throw out the biggest number possible. You've got to explain what it's all about. We want something that you can do with God's help. And it's exciting to watch their faith grow. And when they see that money coming in, it expands their faith. And now they're saying, hey, this is cool. God can do big things through me. I don't have to wait till I'm growing up. So I think this is a great way to encourage your kids to give. Mm -hmm. 
And there you have it, the top 10 list. Mm -hmm. We're done. Mm -hmm. So now it's over to you guys. They told us we could only talk for a little bit, and then we had to let you guys talk for the rest of the time. But one thing I will say before I let you, um, my kids love it when you actually give pictures of you know, the missionaries. Um, there was one time we just did a missions project that was just a blanket. I don't know if it's just for BGMC, but we didn't raise a lot of money that way. But as soon as we picked a missionary and had their faces up there, they and we had pictures of what they were building, that really spurred the kids on to get involved. Um, and I love it every year, or even when we just do uh, projects during the year, is that our kids get involved. Like, I'm gonna do a bake sale. Like, I don't know how many summer outreaches we've had where kids will bake a bunch of goodies and bring them in. And it's all there. You know, one family had a garage sale and they donated, I mean, they, they get excited about giving and they come up with all these fun ways to raise money, not just, I'm gonna go ask mom and dad for money, but here's what I'm gonna do. One girl made friendship bracelets and she brought them and she stood outside the door of our church and sold friendship bracelets to give money to missions. And so if you can encourage that, the kids get really excited and then their hearts are like, look what I did, you know? So it's, it's good to see that with kids, so. Yeah. So now it's over to you. We want, if you have any questions about anything you've seen up here, you need any clarification, or you have your own ideas you want to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you have questions about connecting kids with missions in general. We don't guarantee to have the answer. I don't. Jolene has all the answers. She's, uh, she's the one in charge. That's why they chose her. <laughs> she has all the answers. So. I glean from everybody. <laughs> yes. So what, what are your guys' thoughts, comments, questions, ideas? This only works if you guys actually talk, okay? They told us we couldn't keep going. They did. We've already gone over time, I think, and they told us we had to give you lots of time, so we want to make sure you guys are. I don't know where the prayer cards come from. Can you tell me where oh. Yeah, our prayer cards, pretty much every Assemblies of God missionary has these prayer cards. They're a connection point as we go around to churches. Like full-time missionaries? Yes. Mm -hmm. have them as well? uh, oftentimes, the missionaries' associates will have them. Uh -huh. And if you can't can contact the missionary directly. You can also contact uh, headquarters in Springfield, Missouri and say, do you have any? Because a lot of times we leave cards with them and they can ship them out to you. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, and if, if wow. they come to your church, they'll give you a whole stack of them. Because I Yeah, if you, ask, if you ask your missionaries, I mean, we've printed out thousands of these and we travel with them everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. And so when that missionary comes, just say, hey, would you leave some extra ones here for me? Yeah. It, you, if, if they don't come to your, you know, if they don't have time to come down to your kids' service, just go up to their, their table or go up to them after the service and say, can I have a stack of these? We want to get our kids praying for you, and, and they'll do that. And chances are your church might have prayer cards. I don't know. I know that whenever we have a missionary come to our church, they always leave some, um, and I just have to go, you know, scrounge them up. So. Now, if you guys could just, like, be weeping right now, and we'll, we'll extend <laughs> our hands. And... <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> See, they say a picture never lies. That's not true at all. We can make it say whatever we want. Uh -huh. These are good. Springfield have like trading cards of missionaries. At one time? They did. They did. That was a thing they did several years ago. Uh, quite a few years now. They had these really cool collector cards, trading cards. Mm -hmm. You know what? Why do you have to wait for Springfield to do that? Right. Get your pictures from the missionaries and every except for sensitive countries. We have some missionaries that are in sensitive countries, but you can go to agmd.org. That stands for Assemblies of God Missionary Directory, agmd.org. You can search by name there mm -hmm. and pull up every missionary that, that, that's there, mm -hmm. download their pictures and put them on a card. Yeah. Find a little border, you can make your own collector's cards. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to do it. Then they're all the same and you can have kids trading them, whatever you want to do. And <laughs> New Pokemon. <laughs> I want to make sure I got the buddy barrel in there. Yeah. And me, I, I've got coffee. Oh, wait, that's not cool. All right. Any other questions, comments, thoughts, ideas? I have a question. And that is, do you do you um, do this these kinds of things for missionaries that your church doesn't necessarily support? I mean, it's yeah, um, we haven't, like Amy DeWitt, we, our church hasn't actually taken her on as a missionary yet, but she's a friend of mine, and so I have her come in when she's here, and she did Wednesday, our Wednesday night missions. Um, so yeah, definitely, if they don't support them, you can still, you know, especially if they're home on furlough, and your church might not have them supported yet, but you can bring them in. Well, check with your lead pastor. I don't know how, if churches are different, but my lead pastor, 
you know, if I bring a missionary in, and even if it's one we don't support, we can bring them into our kids' ministries and still give to them. So if the kids, and, then, if they have a, a, an offering that they gather, though, you give it to them yes. specific. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, but again, check also, with your lead pastor, because oh, I, I don't know what every church is overreaching things. I will say also, though, that BGMC offerings are designated, are designed to be undesignated funds. So if you give to a specific project, it will go to that project. But when you take a general offering, uh, it goes into a general fund that's divided among all the regions of the world, and they can use it. And that is a really cool thing because they are the only undesignated funds in missions giving, which means they can go to wherever the need is greatest, and they do a lot of good that way. So encouraging, and I say that because you can talk about missions in general or missionaries that aren't even from your district or from the other side of the country. and we're just building that mission's heart in kids to give no matter what. And, and I think that's a cool thing. So they don't have to be a missionary that comes to your church and you're limited to those things. You can find a missionary that you think this is the coolest ministry ever. And that opens up the doors wide open. Yeah. Our church doesn't, we can't take on any more like commitment monthly yeah. things, but we do have lots of missionaries come and visit mm-hmm. about once a month. We have yeah. their Wednesday night or Sunday night or whatever. Mm-hmm. They come and talk and then we give a whole giving as a church mm-hmm. to them, but we can't commit to monthly giving. So. Yeah, and we've, yeah. Had, we've had missionaries like that too, that they're not part of our monthly commitment, but when they do come and speak, I think our church gives an honorarium to everyone mm-hmm. that speaks. And when I was a children's pastor, you know, I, I used some of the BGMC materials, and they're talking about missionaries I'd never even met before. Mm-hmm. They weren't even part of our district, but it was a cool ministry that they were doing, and I wanted our kids to know mm-hmm. about that sort of thing. And so you can, mm-hmm. you know, again, you've got the internet, you've got all these resources, and the missionary can't stop you. Yeah. Are they going to say, no, don't tell our kids don't about what we're doing? Don't waste money for us. <laughs> yeah. This so, whole missions, too. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Ministries, they yeah. When we have um, kids ministry missionaries um, come, we just had a family that was going to Tokyo, um, and they came for Sunday morning. We did kids church and stuff. Like we yeah. did, we brought the kids in, oh. and mm-hmm. they did like games and stuff. They had a little four year old boy, and so they mm-hmm. did games up front, and so the whole church was together mm-hmm. and being a part. So yeah. even if they don't have, if they're doing the whole sermon, and they don't yeah. have any time to come to kids mm-hmm. church. Yeah. We're, yeah. If you. Yeah. We, we do that when we, because we're children's missionaries, I always just say we're, right. we're going to do a family service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't say kids' service because then the adults yeah. are yeah. turning out, but I say family service. So I say bring the kids in. Mm-hmm. And even if I don't have time to go down there, I, I want the kids to come in and, and mm-hmm. be with us. And so if you can connect with like that, now not every missionary is going to be a good connection that way with kids. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have to pick and choose a little bit that way. But I think it's a great way yeah. to uh, let's learn about missions as a family. Mm-hmm. We do so much of our children's ministry by separating out into separate groups and when we can have those opportunities to bring them together and and let's learn as a family together I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we do like a once a month mission service Mm -hmm. like for the I do the early childhood side so I'm just like thinking of ideas to make it. It could be way better. It could just be. Yeah. So like Somebody just that asked age. me, somebody just asked me, is your workshop going to, is it going to be applicable to early childhood? And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that you can, um, you know, like we have preschool in our summer outreach, and so they get involved in our giving contest. Now, do you have to communicate more with the parents on that, yeah. that side because yeah. the kids aren't, um, but the, pra- I think prayer circles I, I could think, help. I think. The, the short answer is yes, you can do things with those age mm-hmm. kids. Obviously, you're going to have to adapt these ideas yes. and, and mm-hmm. find ways to connect with simple things. You're going to have to keep everything shorter, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, make it simpler. Mm-hmm. But why not start at that age? Mm-hmm. You know, I remember the story I always share about young kids can learn about God is our daughter at, at three years of age when we were landing uh, for our first term in Africa and we're the plane is coming down, and all of a sudden the pilot comes over the loudspeaker and he says, uh, we are preparing for landing, please put your tray tables in the upright position and fasten your seat belts. And so I'm leaning over, my little th- three-year-old girl is sitting next to me, and I'm, I'm connecting her seat belt to get ready for landing. She looks up at me and says, Daddy, when we're landing, why does Jesus always talk to us? <laughs> you see, we've been telling her since she was a little girl. We've been praying with her and telling her, you can't see God, but he's up there and he talks to us. 
So when this voice from up there talked to her, mm -hmm. she thought that was Jesus. Now, obviously I had to correct, but see, I, I say that as they are learning. Yeah. They're forming their vision of God. So why not let them form a, a, a heart for missions even at that young age? Even if it's mom and dad giving them the money, but they're still putting it in there. That's my buddy bill and I'm bringing it to them. Uh, and so I think that's good. Get creative. Uh, look for teaching ideas online. You know, Google is your friend. Search for that. I also will say that BGMC materials, I think they're great. Uh, they have those true mission stories that I think are, yeah. And, and, you know, add your own pictures to that because sometimes you only have like three pictures. What I always did was I zoomed in on a little area. Okay. I, I made them into a PowerPoint so you could zoom in on some, some aspect and then zoom out. And so you can make it seem like more pictures that way. Mm -hmm. um, you can do lots of visuals. Quick, easy object lessons. Just helping your kids understand that. So. I think they're, like, they can understand that there's different yeah. like, cultures and Googling like West Africa and like seeing what yeah. pictures pull up mm -hmm. and just printing them out and mm -hmm. having them to talk about mm -hmm. like these are some things that they have. Yeah. And connecting it because those little kids are so concrete, yeah. connecting it all those things with what they know. Mm -hmm. Saying what's your favorite food? And have a whole bunch of pictures of American food, pizza right. and hamburgers and fries, and say, now let's talk about a place where they don't have any of this food. Right. What do they have? And then you print it out. So that's giving that concrete connection. I like this, but in Africa they eat this. In China they eat this. And so anytime you can make, with, with those young kids, you want to make the connection as concrete as possible. So I like the pictures. That's a great idea. I think uh, teaching, well, this is more of a, not a children's ministry things, but trying to figure out how you can teach your parents to model giving at home. Because um, if you model giving at home, then your kids are going to see that. I know my husband and I have made it a point um, to when we talk about, like, for instance, we have a toy drive every, every year. And so we get to pick off a kid off the tree. And, and so every year we let the boys go and pick off a, a, a tag. And we try and get them to get somebody their own age. And then we go to the store. They get to pick out a toy that they would love. And they get to, um, or even when we do, we do a, a Christmas offering every year. So we collect money for our compassion fund. Um, and so we talk about out loud with the boys around, you know, how much should we give? Let's pray about it. Um, and a cool story about my son, he's seven, and he gets money for birthdays. And I think he had like $28. And this last summer at our Vacation Bible Adventure, you know, we did our missions project. And, you know, they always, we always give money to them to give. But he's like, Mom, I, I, think, I think I need to give some of my money. I'm like, okay, you know. He's like, Mom, I think I need to give all of it. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay. And he's like, and then he came back. He's like, I, I, I won't have any money left if I, if I give it all, Mom. And I said, well, you know, you just need to ask God. What, what is God telling you to give? Does he want? Yeah, I think I need to give it all, Mom. I'm like, okay, well then, well, I'm not going to have any money left, Mom. And I'm like, well, you don't, you know, Caleb, you don't have to give all of it, but, I, I, but I'm just supposed to. I just know I'm supposed to. I'm like, Okay, and we had this conversation for like an hour. And so he ended up, he's like, the next day he brought it all down. He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it all, Mom. And we, he took it and he gave it all. And I was like so proud of him. And I think part of that is, he, you know, we're, I think we model it. And then he feels it too because we talk a lot about praying and asking God, you know, what do you want me to give, God? What can I give? You know, and for him, for my 7-year-old, $28, he was saving up to get a Lego set, you know. And so he gave all of that. Um, it just it warmed my heart. So I think if you can teach your parents in your children's ministry to model giving, just like they need to model their Christian life with their kids, you know, that's just. I think part that's of, great. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. And, and talking about the young kids especially, mm -hmm. we do this as a family mm -hmm. because at that age, mm -hmm. mom and dad are everything. Mm -hmm. You know, what mom and dad do is cool. You're still cool to your kids at that age. Yeah. <laughs> um, and mom and dad can do anything. And if mom and dad are doing, it, I want to do it too. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. connect now that. Of course, if you're bringing in unchurched kids, we don't want to leave them out. Right. So we have to be creative there. Right. But the more we can connect yeah. and say, we do this as a family, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you're, were we done?
That was quick and easy. No more questions, no more yeah, comments, stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What are some ideas you had for the, like when you did the challenges, like how did you do that? Like, like in our the, summer the outings? Challenges or, yeah, for your summer outings, like how did you, could you get like gifts or yeah, so in our, and tell me if this is what you want, in our summer outreach, we split our kids up into four different teams, our elementary okay. age kids. Um, preschool makes it five. Um, and then how we do it is every day, whichever team, so like this last year, what did, what did we do? Oh, um, somebody in my congregation made us a big bucket of green slime. Oh. And so um, whatever team raised the most money that day, then they got to pick two of their leaders to come up on stage and we would pour slime over them. Um, and then at the end, if we reached our goal, because we always set a goal. And the past three years, you can call me low of little faith, but I would always, I'm like, okay, maybe 3,500. But then the last two years, we've been going way over. For, we, I think last year was 4,700. So anyway, so by Thursday, we already reached our goal. So I had to like, so then by Friday, if they reach our goal, then, um, I get slimed or somebody oh, else yeah. who's up there with who is it, whoever else is up there with me. Um, so just, and then one year it was like the ice bucket challenge was big. Right. And so we did the ice bucket challenge. Uh -huh. One year I brought in a dunk tank. Uh -huh. and the, the kids love to see their leaders in there. Um, uh -huh. You know, so, and it makes it fun and they'll bring in, you know, and I have a mom who they don't go to our church, but they uh -huh. come to our summer outreach. And every year she comes to me and she's like, here you go. And she just gives me a whole wad of cash and this last year I counted it and it was like eight hundred dollars. Yeah. She said they don't come to our church, yeah. you know, but every year she brings her grandkids to our summer outreach and every year she gives, you know, and so it just makes it exciting and they give and like I said we use I, I'm a big fan of using a lot of concrete pictures. Mm -hmm. The videos helped because the Capone family they actually come from our, from our church. Okay. And so the kids have a relationship with the Capone kids. Yeah. And so to see them up on the screen giving the daily Bible point every day, um, we talk about what they're gonna be doing there. The kids would talk about it on the video. And so that really encourages them to give because they can see what they're giving to. Um, so that's really helped too, is to make sure that they know exactly, oh, we're gonna build this building. This is what it looks like. Oh, and kids are gonna go in there and they're gonna be taught Sunday school. And so the more things that you can give them what they're giving to you, the more they're gonna give. Mm -hmm. One thing I'd add with, with competitions like that yeah. though, is I always wanna bring it back to at the end, hey, we all won. Yeah. Because we all right. helped, we won, and kids on the other side of the world won yeah. because of you. Mm -hmm. So whether you won the competition and won the prize or got to slam your leader or whatever it is, remember that and bring it back to that yeah. idea that we're doing what God wants us to do and, and, and so they all win. So I think and, the competitions are great because kids like to compete, right. yeah. but always then try and, because I've seen competitions get ugly. I've been yeah. at kids camp where the, you know, they're shouting at each other, you're stupid, you know, we're gonna yeah. win. And, and we had to cut the competition and, and find a new way to do that. Mm -hmm. So I always wanna make sure that I, I like, and I'm not yeah. saying don't do that, but at the end, especially want to make sure that. And that's sure why that we have that overreaching goal. So it's yeah. not just, oh, the team's going to get this, but mm -hmm. if we all make our goal, right. you know. And then connecting it to right. say, hey, look what we did together. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you educate the parents in all of this? I so don't it's know. Not just the kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I need more money. Well, every, so in our okay. Vacation Bible Adventure, we, we send out a flyer every day. Um, and so it tells them, you know, what they learned. We, we talk about the missions project, what they're giving to, how much we raised that day. So every day parents are seen. Um, so they get it now, if they read it, I don't know. But every day, every parent that comes gets an email. Did you get any, you probably got an email. Yeah, when you brought, yeah. yeah. so uh, that's what we do. We send out a daily email every day to the parents. So the giving project's on there, what we learned that day, how much we gave. And so parents are seeing it on the paper as well. Mm -hmm. And I think you just have to over communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much happening in their lives and yeah. school and all that. You're just going to have to over communicate. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no one answer saying if you do this one thing, all the parents are going to know. So the more you communicate, mm -hmm. texts and emails and flyers and mm -hmm. you know, f four or five different ways to tell them about that. But it, it is good that they know. Mm -hmm. And again, getting families to give together, say hey, we're doing this together. Because who, where's that money coming from? Mom and dad. Most of the time it's coming from mom and dad. Yeah. Now hopefully you're encouraging your kids, hey, don't just beg mom and dad, but you go out and you work for this and you sacrifice. We want, we want to teach our kids that as well. And we talk about but, that at our summer outreach too, is don't yeah. just go, you know, but how can you do it creatively? What can you do to get money? Right. You know, so. But even, even when they're going out and doing a project, it's not without mom and dad's right. approval and, right. and, and help. Right. So the more we can involve them, the better.
guys are such a quiet bunch. <laughs> Either we've done a really good job and explained everything, or we did a really bad job and you just went out of here right now. <laughs> we did the barrels and I've been doing preschool. Yeah. And so we actually handed them to the parents, so we were able to get doubly explained yeah, I was, to the parents what was going on yeah. with it. I was going to say preschool kids probably would love to have a buddy barrel. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. And the older kids, it, they have those buddy money. boxes now. Yeah which is a little bit more grown up. It's, it's a little box, they, they claps down so they're easy to ship. Um, the other cool thing with both the boxes and the barrels is you're giving them empty, that's a perfect place to put in a little flyer mm -hmm. for information. Mm -hmm. So you're telling the parents, but you know, again, over communicate. Have your project goal in there, what you're doing, all that sort of thing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And I want awesome. to say these are no cost. They used to be no cost. I oh, think now there's a small charge, small charge, but I don't know for sure okay. because it changes all the time. The AG website, the national. Go to um, search BGMC. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's part of the Four Kids yeah. website. We can, website. we can look it up. Hey, guess what? Yeah. This is called a cellular telephone. <laughs> it's a small Smart internet phone. device in your hands. Yeah. MyHealthyChurch.org. That's true. That's another yeah, that's. But there's several different ways to get it. But if you search <laughs> yeah. BGMC, and be yeah. careful because I searched that one time and I got um, Boston Gay Men's Choir. <laughs> so, yeah, BGMC. I, I searched BGMC because I, I didn't have one of these. The Royal Wanger guy had one. But Here, this here's is the, website. the progression of Buddy Barrels over the years. So it started out as an original wooden barrel. And then in 1979, it changed to the plastic. And then in 1987, it got a lid. It's a wider lid, and now look at this. That's clear. It's like now it's clear. Can you see? Uh, the website for BGMC, and they have a lot of great resources. It's not just yeah. Buddy Barrels. They have yeah. all kinds. I mean, I've never seen. I don't think yeah. any department brands themselves as well as BGMC. So you can get all kinds of stuff there. BGMC.ag for Assemblies of God. Dot org for organization mm -hmm. or organ mm -hmm. or something like that. Dot org bgmc.ag.org mm -hmm. and there they have all kinds of free downloads materials you can download for free lessons but they also have stuff that you can buy if you want to hand out little prizes to your kids BGMC branded prizes they've got the the boxes and I think the boxes are free I'm not sure about the barrels they used to be free and mm -hmm. because costs have gone up I think there's a small charge but it's it's minimal mm -hmm. all right good question Five. Somebody ask a question. <laughs> um, you mentioned like when you have like the giving time in the kids' church, like doing like a three-minute like snippet or something mm -hmm. beforehand. Would that be something that was done like every week, or you like, could talking about a different missionary, or, like focusing on this, like how would that? Work? And that, those have little snippets, right? Yeah, these oh, have yes. little snippets, but okay. I've also done. Um, just giving less, not necessarily missions related, okay. but why yeah. we give. Um, I don't do it every Sunday because some Sundays we're kind of packed and so we do just take the offering, but I try and at least, you know, two Sundays a month talk about why we give or I'm doing a prayer guide. Um, so it just kind of depends on, you know. It, yeah, it totally depends on you, your church, your program. I did it every Sunday, but I just, that was part of my lesson. Right. Yeah. I had the, and sometimes it doesn't have to be three minutes, sometimes it's just one minute. Yeah. Yeah. But why do we give? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, and try to come up with different creative ways to give. Although we should do it every week because now, what is the statistic? A regular attender considers themselves twice a month when they come once every three Sundays. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, if you're not teaching every week, then you're going to miss some of those kids. Yeah. So, again, it, it fit it into your program, adapt it. It doesn't have to be long and elaborate, mm -hmm. but uh, there's and, and search the internet. You'll find all kinds of cool giving ideas. Mm -hmm. um, just for explaining giving in general, but then also connect it with missions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, thanks you guys for coming yeah. to our workshop. Is that the, fun. are we, did we finish the whole time? What, what time were we supposed to go to? I'm not sure. If not, we give you bonus minutes. For puppets? Sorry. I don't have puppets. You have puppets? I don't puppets? do puppets. <laughs> we don't do puppets. Actually, I do have a puppet sitting out in my car.